All right, and we're live. All right, everyone. Thanks so much again for joining me today. We're going to be doing another live stream. Uh, and live. Nope. Right, sorry, let me turn my volume off here. For joining me today, we're going to be doing another live stream. Uh, and nope. sorry, let me turn my volume off here. No, oh, there we go. <laughs> Always something tactical with me. So as you know, every time I start out, there's something I've done wrong. And I was hearing that feedback from my own voice here. But anyways, uh, today we're going to be uh, waterproofing a bathroom floor. And I really do find that this is one of the, a very important step to the process. A lot of the bathrooms that I tear out, there's always some kind of rotten subfloor, typically around the toilet area. And another really common place is right in front of the tub. And, you know, for good reason. You know, toilets leak. Um, people overflow the toilets and more importantly, like I think that, you know, around a shower or a tub, there's a lot of water that kind of comes out of that tub. If you have kids, you know what it's like. It's just unbelievable how much water they can get all over the place and not pay attention to it. So, so I, in my mind, I think if you're going to spend all this money to renovate a bathroom that you really should waterproof. Uh, the flooring before you get into the tiling process or even if you're going to be using the vinyl plank if you're going with vinyl I also think it's a great idea to waterproof underneath of that you could always you know most of these vinyl plank stuff now that you have are basically clicked together it's a floating floor system and you're able to just you know if, if you want to get later on go to tile you can just tear it up and then start tiling over that new waterproofed uh, system you have underneath there so there's a lot of benefits to, to waterproofing, and in this particular situation, I did a heated flooring system. So I think it's even more important to have a waterproof uh, subfloor over top of that. And we're going to get into the comparison of some of the different uh, systems of the, the, the heating system, because I actually just kind of created a spreadsheet this morning to evaluate what it cost me to do this heated flooring system and then what it's going to cost what it's costing me to do to do the waterproofing and i wanted to highlight some reasons why i'm going with the waterproofing that i'm using and why the heated flooring system that i used uh, and it really comes down to what i'm going to be setting over top of it and then obviously expense you know price always has a factor so we'll get into this here if you look at my chat i have the document that you can take a look at um, on YouTube, you can check that out. I have, and I should be able to put it on Facebook, but I had a problem with that yesterday doing that for some reason because um, I couldn't find where I was live on it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So, same thing right now. So anyways, let's get into my diagram here because I think it's important to kind of really uh, reference, uh, you know, what things are really going to cost you. There's a lot of systems out there, uh, especially when it comes to all of this stuff, whether it's waterproofing or even uh, the, the heating system. You know, a lot of these manufacturers make some really great products, but they kind of hide some of the other costs that are associated with actually doing it. And I'll show you here what I mean here shortly. But, um, you know, the, the question of whether you should waterproof, I think it's definitely an important aspect to do. Uh, and if you were just doing just re a regular bathroom floor over a wood subfloor, you know, I, it's, you'll see on, on my channel, there's many, many uh, videos I have on using just a regular old Ditra. Uh, so Ditra is, uh, you know, a really awesome, easy membrane to install. And you can just basically go right into tiling directly afterwards. It's a terrific way to go. I find it to be you know, really best if it's larger format tile though. If you're doing plank tile, 12 by 24s, even 12 by 12s are great. Anything smaller than that, I do like to do floor level or so that you have a flat floor. And there are limitations to Ditra. So if you're considering doing this, um, pay attention that if, 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 it's, if you're getting tile that are smaller than like two by twos, like this is a popular uh, type of tile we're doing something similar to this, but it's going to be, um, it's, just, it's a little bit different. But these are like a, a popular older, old fashioned looking, you know, hexagonal tile. These are basically one inch by one inch pieces here. You would not be able to do that effectively over Ditra. And honestly, you'd probably have a hard time getting it to the lay completely flat. Um, and Schluter really doesn't recommend having smaller tiles like that over. The membrane either so in this fashion if you were to do this 
I would floor level the bathroom or use cement board and then do a liquid waterproofing. So in this video, what you're gonna see me demonstrate a little bit later on here is actually doing the liquid waterproofing. I think it's a really easy, foolproof way to do it. Um, and we have this overheated flooring. So I think it's, in my mind, it makes a lot of sense to have the waterproofing over top of uh, your, your heated flooring system rather than, you know, Dietra Heat and a lot of these other systems, they have the waterproofing kind of underneath of the heated wiring. I don't know why you would want to have any water, have any chance of penetrating the heated wiring, even though it's coated and it's rated to do that. I think it's best to waterproof on top. It just makes a lot more sense to me. So, um, so Dietra, again, great, great way to go. I mean, it's, you know, 90 bucks a roll. This was a 50 square foot bathroom that I have back here. So you could see it's just a standard tub. I mean, it's nothing, um, you know, the bathroom was basically a six by 10 foot bathroom. Um, and basically we have about 50 square feet of flooring that we need to be doing here. Here's my dogs in there. My wife getting ready here. We're going to, you know, we're going to be live streaming many different places uh, as I've been doing on these last couple of uh, jobs here or, or uh, live streams. So I'll be on Instagram and TikTok. You could always follow me there too, if you, if you're interested, but um, the heated floor, it's only 50 square feet. So Dietra, 90 bucks, you thin set it down. Uh, you know, you roughly have about $130 wrapped into the, the actual Dietra mat with the thin set. That's pretty reasonable. Got a waterproof system. Awesome. Uh, another option is to use something like uh, Weedy uh, Subliner. So this is just a subliner. This is like kind of a, it's a, similar to this, the Guru stuff that we just installed around the tub surround. Uh, and it's just a membrane that you uh, basically thin set down in place. A little bit more pricey, Weedy always is, um, but 103 bucks plus the, the, the thin set, you're looking at about $143 to waterproof it with the subliner. Um, and that would be basically about the same for Guru. So this is basically the, the waterproof membrane we did on the walls. And uh, so just matching what we did there, uh, we could easily do with another roll of this. And this is just literally just being thin set it down. So that's another great option. You know, the only thing about membranes uh, of any sort like this is that, you know, it's all revolves around your troweling and your thin set layer. And, uh, and how flat the floor actually is. So, but we did floor leveler, so it's 100% flat, which I really is important for mosaics. So, I mean, that's one main reason that I even um, really did the loose wire heated flooring system because I knew I was gonna be putting tile in like this and you really wanna have that uh, floor leveled so that it's 100% flat and all you have to do is trowel uh, your thin set evenly and then you can just tamp everything down in place. So. All I'm saying is that the subliner, you know, where everything laps a little bit, that could be an area that is going to be a little problematic with uh, setting that tile. So there's little one by one tiles, you know, you're, you're, you're combing your thin set in a, in a direction and you're trying to collapse the ridges. Uh, it's going to really be tight to the floor. So if anything that's kind of has a little bit of a ridge, uh, like those overlaps are going to be a problem. Same with the Dietra. Dietra, if you want to make that 100% waterproof, you need to put the curdy band over the seams um, and that can raise that area. So that's another issue with it. But what I'm going to be doing here today, and I'll be demonstrating this live, it's really simple. It's not much harder than, you know, painting a door in a sense is hydro band. And we're going to be also using the mesh, which is going to make this even better to waterproof around the perimeter of the room. So the liquid waterproofing in my mind is, is the easiest and it's gonna keep your floor the flattest because you're just, um, you're basically just painting it on. So there is no seam. It's just gonna be, you know, basically uh, a swimming pool, <laughs> you know? So that's gonna really make it easy. It's, it's actually a little bit cheaper than these other systems uh, because it's just the gallon of um, hydro band and then we're gonna do the mesh tape um, yeah, so with the mesh tape, you are looking at about 130 bucks. So it is all, they're all relatively the same. About 130 bucks for any standard bathroom to waterproof, I would say is pretty normal. So, you know, when you're price comparing waterproofing on something like this, it's really, it's a, it's a, 
net gain, it's all gonna be pretty much the same. Um, so, but looking at the heating systems, that's where you can definitely save some money. So uh, what I installed, let me just show you what I installed first. So, it, and when you guys download this or, or take a look at my Google Doc, you can click on each one of these and it'll bring you over to uh, the link. A lot of this is going to my Amazon store, so just know that. If you purchase any of this, you're kind of helping me out. Um, but, you know, this is the system I installed. This was a warming system. It was a loose wire system. To me, it just made sense because I was going to be floor leveling over top of it. So, you know, why, you know, why spend all that money on something that is just going to basically space the wires proper, you know, um, it, it's easier. Don't get me wrong. Dietra heat and stuff like that are easier when it comes to placing the wire. But if you're going to floor level over it anyways, what's the difference? Um, so 260 bucks is what this price was on this. I don't even know if you can see the price on this. Uh, you know, I should probably bring this over a little bit. Yeah, there you go. You get to see there now. So 260 bucks is what this system was. And it includes everything with the wire, uh, the thermostat, which is the important part. That's usually the very expensive part of the system. And then these little cable runs. So check out my live video on that. I'll definitely have some new polished videos that will deep dive into installing this system. But the live demonstration just shows exactly that installation. Um, so that's what I went with. And the reason was, was because I knew I was gonna be floor leveling it. And then I wanted to do uh, the hydro band over top of it. So that's why, oh, did I just cancel out of there? There, there we go. Okay, so 260 bucks. Now that is not the only cost involved. You have to account for the actual, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 what do you call it? The self leveler. You have to account for the self, self leveler. It's not fair to say, that you're just paying 100, uh, 260 bucks for that system because you have to coat the wires with something. So I went with liquid backer board. I was actually a little bit surprised this morning when I looked at what I paid for it because I didn't realize that, that I paid this price. I paid $60 a bag for this stuff. It went up in cost since the last time that I remember buying this. And you know, when you're doing a flip home or a renovation, a lot of times you're just not even really paying attention to what's going out the door. And uh, yeah, so $60 a bag, uh, pretty painful. So you have to incorporate that into the cost of things and that's exactly what it is. Um, it's that because I, without the floor level, you're not gonna be able to encapsulate those wires. So I needed three bags of that. That was, so that's, two, plus the primer. You can't forget the primer. Uh, that is a requirement for this to go over your floor. So you need the primer. This is not cheap either, $66, a uh, little ridiculous, but that's, that's what it is. And you know, if you do this all the time, um, I'm sorry, I, I keep trying to show you the price over there. It's just not working out. But uh, anyway, that's $66 for a gallon of this. Now you could probably get smaller quantities of this, but um, yeah, all in all, uh, you know, I, I usually just get a gallon because I'm doing many different projects, but it is something that, you know, this particular job, that's what it basically is costing me is 60 bucks. So $240 to self level the bathroom. So I would incorporate that into the actual cost. So we're looking at a total of $500 for the system that I installed. The warming system, it's highlighted here in pink. Um, you know, and eventually I'm going to get something that's going to make this easier to see because I know a lot of you are watching this on your phone and you're not able to really uh, visually see this, but you can always click on the, uh, you know, the down, you know, the, the link to this so you can visualize it for yourself. So 500 bucks for the warming system. The other big dog in the room that is very popular, and this is where I wanted to discuss some of the hidden costs that they don't really reference to you about is Dietra heat. So this is very popular. I've done it a lot. You'll see it on my channel. You've probably seen it on me on other channels doing a lot of this stuff. Um, I really loved it. I think it is great. Um, but, you know, in a scenario where you're doing a mosaic floor, you know, where you're doing these type of tiles, you, you know, you, you can't really do that over Dietra heat. So if you're doing a small mosaic like this, it's not gonna work over there. They don't, they don't allow you to do that and it's really problematic because the spacing of the Dietra heat mat is really uh, pretty wide. So you, you can't really, you have to basically floor level to make this stuff look good. So 
Uh, let me get back to my Dietra heat. So the Dietra heat, it, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great system. If you're doing 12 by 24s, something like that, this is pretty easy. So you're looking at 500 bucks for this same type of uh, uh, system for the same amount of square footage, basically 62 square feet. So it's not, um, it's pretty reasonable uh, when it comes to, but they're not incorporating the thin set that it requires to set this with. So you usually have in this amount of bathroom, you probably have a half a bag of thin set, which all set is, that's $40. Uh, and you know, you're gonna have to fill that top waffle, which that takes a lot of uh, thin set. So you could pretty much plan, if, if I were, you know, I'm, I'm bidding the job, I'm planning on two bags of thin set just to get the, my mat down and to go over top of it. And then I'm gonna be incorporating another bag of thin set for my tile. Now that's a separate cost, I'm setting tile. Uh, so I'm not incorporating that into the cost of this because I really do feel like that should be separated when you're looking at the actual cost of the heat. But you're gonna need two bags of Schluter All Set to set the mat and fill the waffle so that you can tile. So that comes out to $570. Very, very comparable to the warming system. You know, $70 difference. And if you like the warranty of Schluter and you, ha you get their warranty for their system, you know, there's, there's an argument to be made there. That's the way you should go. Uh, however, I think having the waterproofing over top of the system makes a lot more sense to me. So being able to liquid waterproof over this heated flooring system, I know that no water is actually gonna penetrate those wires ever. To me, that makes a lot more sense than have, because in the Dietra heat system, it, the waterproofing's below it. You're basically, unless you blanket it over with a uh, curdy membrane, you're basically, you know, allowing water to get to those wires. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So, you know, probably from here on out, I'm most likely going to be doing a floor leveling type of system with most of my heated flooring systems. Plus, you know, floor leveler, you get to have your floor completely leveled, you know, completely flat. Um, most of the time you guys are not going to have a completely flat floor. Uh, maybe if you even put new subfloor, it just, you know, I'll show you in here, here a little bit later, put the six foot level on it. There's no space. It's completely flat. It's going to make it so much easier to actually tile. So to me, I think it's worth the extra uh, work to do um, the, the liquid backer board. Uh, now that this does hog up time. I mean, it is taking me more time to do the floor leveler and to waterproof it. So you have to incorporate your time into this. Whereas Dietra heat, you could set that immediately get into the tiling. So there's a lot to be said for that. If that's all you were doing was a bathroom floor and you want, they wanted heat, I'd probably go with Dietra heat on that job because I could just immediately start tiling that day. And if that was the only job I was doing, makes a lot of sense. Whereas when you're doing the floor level, I mean, you pretty much, you pretty much or you're screwed for a day before you can actually get started on tiling. So that's a big deal. The next bigger item that I think a lot of people are familiar with is new heat. So I used to do a lot of this as well. And I think these make a lot of sense as well. Oh, that's the thermostat. Um, yeah. So the new heat, so the, the, the thermostat comes separately, but $300 for basically the size roll that I was going to be needing. So 60, a uh, five foot by four foot area. This would actually be a little bit less of a space that I actually wanted. I was at, this is, um, what's four by six. That's 24 square feet. I actually used 30 square feet. So the loose wire was allowed me to have a little bit more heated flooring space, but these mats are awesome because you can just, you thin set them down and they're very flat and it all, you know, you don't have to mess around with the wires. Uh, but if you're going to be doing that mosaic tile, if you're going to do those smaller tiles, this is going to be raised up from the rest of the floor. So you kind of have to floor level over it or thin set over it. I, you know, thin setting over, it's kind of hard to, you know, because you're basically one side's going to have an eighth inch you know, height and the other parts not. So, you know, you'd probably be better off floor leveling over it. Um, depending on, you know, if you're going to do mosaic tiles, that system doesn't make any sense. Um, if you're doing 12 by 24s, you can overcome that thickness of the mat and then move on with your project. And this would save time too. You could just put that mat in 
and thin set right over top of it and get that 12 by 24s. It's gonna be a little bit more challenging than, than the Dietrich heat because the Dietrich heat keeps everything at the same level, but um, definitely a good way to go. <laughs> but the price is uh, 300 plus the, uh, it's 476 uh, and that's not including thin setting it down. And I actually had, you know, if I were to do it, I'd probably end up floor leveling over top of it. So you have all the expenses as a floor leveler. So to me, using the new heat system in the mat form would roughly cost me about 700 bucks to do this same room. And then again, it's confined to what I'm doing. I'm installing these small mosaic tiles. So that's, that's the whole idea here. So 12 by 24s or bigger large format tile, you have a lot more wiggle room with what you're doing and you don't have to be as precise when it comes to flatness. And then the last one I have, just because you see this a lot on Amazon, I actually considered trying this, but I still like the loose wire system better. This is, these are the ones on the mat that you can flip over and, and move. Um, and basically the same price as the warming system, really not much different. The only thing I feel like you're, you're kind of somewhat restricted. You can cut, keep cutting that mesh out of there until you make it work. Um, but uh, I didn't really see any benefit really putting it on the mesh. Um, you, you have to floor level or over it anyways. A lot of people do thin set over these things um, if you're doing large format tiles. So you could thin set this down and then thin set over top of it. But it's, you know, it's, it, it's kind of somewhat cumbersome because it's uh, going to be higher on one side of the bathroom than the other because where you don't have floor heat, you can't really put the floor heat underneath the cabinet you still you still can't have it around the toilet so there's gonna be areas that aren't going to be at the same height so to me it just makes sense if you're to use this is the floor level the bathroom again so you're looking at 540 bucks for the lux heat so new heat came into the most the biggest expense the only reason was was because i'm doing that mosaic tile ditra heat was probably the second most expensive because of the amount of thin set the hidden costs that they're not telling you on that one um or, you know, they're not advertising, put it that way. They're not saying how much thin set it actually takes. It hogs up a lot of thin set. Anybody who's done Dietrich heat, it's like, oh my goodness, I'm using an entire bag just to fill this thing. So it is kind of painful in that regard. Um, and then the Lux heat and then the warming system are basically about the same. So that's really the comparison here that I wanted to highlight. And the reason, you know, I mean, I know this is a waterproofing video, but you have to put it in context with what you're actually doing. And these mosaic tiles are uh, really the crutch of the whole designing feature of this. If you don't plan right on this, you can really do make this a really tough job on yourself because this doesn't have a lot of flexibility for you. It needs to be flat. You, can, you don't have a lot of areas. You can't, I mean, you can float it somewhat, but and then you're fighting all the thin set coming in through the bottom and it's a real pain. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention that you should have on hand if you're doing any type of flooring if you're a contractor or whatever, is this Ardex feather finish. I'll show you exactly what I did in here, uh, just to patch a couple things up after the floor leveler. Um, this is a really helpful uh, deal because it doesn't. nothing needs to be primed. You just immediately uh, can use it, and 20 minutes later, you can put your floor coverings over it. So, um, you know, I wouldn't say this is a must-have for every bathroom, but for these intricate projects where you're trying to do these smaller tiles, um, I would have a bag of this on hand just to be able to fill it in. And it kind of goes over every type of substrate too. As long as it's a sound substrate, you can pretty much use this up to a half inch thickness and no priming involved. Just mix it, use it. Um, it's very, very versatile and it, it dries fairly quickly. They say 15 minutes. I've never seen it dry that quickly. It usually takes longer than that. So there's my spiel on that. Uh, let me go back here to YouTube, see if there's anybody in here. Hey, Fast Hatch, man, I really appreciate you uh, adding that to me. I really appreciate um, Self-inflicted, I appreciate that, man. This is uh, really awesome you guys support me here. Um, so, yeah, uh, let me see here. So th thoughts on rolling out membrane like Red Guard on an entire floor. Um, Red Guard mat, you mean, self-inflicted learning? Uh, the, the membrane itself, I don't know if Red Guard membrane is allowed... Um, on the floors. If it is, it'd be basically the same as using the Guru system or uh, the subliner 
uh, that that is basically you know I mean they're all kind of roughly the same. I know that uh, Schluter doesn't necessarily warrant um, the Curdy membrane used on a on a top of a floor surface like this. Uh, so you know you have to be careful about what the manufacturer is saying. But the subliner we've used many times. This is probably similar to what Custom has. And really, again, uh, if you're doing these smaller mosaics uh, like this. Uh, you know, it's really sensitive to the height. So a lot of these membranes aren't going to just fit in one side. They're usually only three foot three wide. So, you know, you're going to have an overlap somewhere. And where that overlap is, is where you're going to have a problem making this 100% flat. So um, the membranes are great. I used them many, many times. I just wouldn't do it for a mosaic like this. If you're doing 12 by 24s or something like that, yeah, no problem. Um, I, I would do that. That would be that would work out just great. So, but yeah, great question. Uh, why Ardex backer board versus Mape self lever? Sixty bucks versus thirty bucks. Barney, good question. Um, you know, that is a good question. I honestly didn't realize I was paying sixty dollars a bag. I didn't even. I've been using that for a long time. I thought it was roughly around forty bucks, ten bucks more than most of the other places, and I was wrong. Uh, so. And that would definitely start to question my mind as well. I might actually start going with Mapay. Um, I like the Ardex. I just always loved most of their products. But, you know, if it's double the cost and I'm just trying to self-level and all works the same, I'm probably just going with Mapay as well. So good question. I would probably go that route as well. Um, oh, just a liquid. Yeah, self-inflicting. Um, Red Guard. I, I don't personally like Red Guard. I, I would go with the Hydro Band uh, myself. It's fast drying. Unless you got the speed um, setting Red Guard, uh, you know, because that seems to be a little bit thicker and works a little bit, uh, you know, kind of like Hydro Band. I, uh, but for, in my experience with all the Red Guard I've ever used, it seems like it takes forever to dry. And you normally want two coats. So it's like, it's, I feel like you're waiting around forever for it to dry before you can go ahead and add a little bit more onto it. But certainly acceptable um, on, not on, not on just uh, plywood or anything like that, but on, on a uh, liquid or a uh, self-leveling compound like this, you'd be totally fine. Um, but I, I really do highly recommend what, what I'll be using here, which is the, uh, the Hydra Band. I really do recommend uh, using this stuff. This is uh, really, it, it dries within two hours, so I could usually get two coats pretty easily uh, without any problems. So, all right, so I'm going to get into this. Uh, again, I'm going to be doing a bunch of different lives at the same time, so you're going to hear myself uh, repeat myself a bit, um, so especially uh, about the, the different systems. So hang in there. If you're watching this later on, you can speed on through. I'm going to keep an eye on my audio, make sure that that stays on here this time. Thanks so much for joining me today. Give me a like on this. Self-inflicted, fast hatch. I really appreciate the support. So take me off of here. All right, let me um, get, I'm going to just put TikTok on first. So let me just let them Okay, so we're live on TikTok. All right. Did you see, did you see that mosaic towel that I had? I didn't even know you had Oh, here's one right here, right here, yeah. Hey Instagram, all right, so we're gonna be doing some floor leveling, or not floor leveling, but we're gonna actually be waterproofing our floor leveler. And I wanted to go over about the different systems for waterproofing and why I'm going with a liquid waterproofing. So, um, you know, there's so many different ways to do all of this stuff. As you know, there's many different manufacturers that kind of work the same as far as, 
accomplishing the goal and waterproofing a bathroom floor, I feel is a really important step. There's all too many times I'm tearing apart an existing bathroom and I see a lot of rotten wood, especially around the toilet area and especially in front of the tub. So if you have kids, you know how much water comes out of that area. So there's two common ways that, uh, well, there's a many different common ways, but I would say the most popular is the Schluter Ditra. Uh, and you've probably seen me have a lot of videos on this stuff. Definitely have a lot of it on YouTube as well, installing this stuff. And it is one of my go-tos. This is definitely something I like to do. Um, and it's definitely pretty simple because once you set it, you can pretty much move right on to the tiling process, which is really important depending on your time frame and trying to squeeze the amount of time you're in a place off it makes you more profitable. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, for one, I wanted to do a heated flooring system in this bathroom. So that was number one. Now Schluter does make a Dietra heat mat which you've probably seen me demonstrate as well. And I've done a lot of it and it's a great product, but you have to plan on what kind of tile you're planning on installing. So this isn't the particular bathroom floor that we're doing, but it's something similar. Uh, but these are little smaller tiles. So one by one tiles. And here, let me point, TikTok over here too. Sorry, I'm doing many multiple live streams as I always do, so bear with me. But if you're doing smaller mosaics like this, uh, it really requires a flat floor. If you don't have a flat floor, this, is, this could be very painful. It can look awful. It's, believe me, coming from experience here, when I first did a couple of these floors, they looked terrible, especially if you use a dark grout. If you have any deflection anywhere or if you have anything that's not flat, it ends up looking really terrible. So a flat floor is really imperative and you really don't want to be doing that over Dietra. Um, I, don't, I don't believe in Schluter is, is suggesting anything less than two by two. So these are one by ones. You would want to have two by twos or bigger to go over Schluter. Plus this is, this is the waffle right here is somewhat problematic to keep this flat. So this was out, this didn't make any sense to me because again, we were doing a heated flooring system. And if you see my other live videos, I'm installing that heated flooring system. You know that I did a self leveler over top of it and that gets me to 100% flat. So options for floor or for waterproofing really comes down to either using a membrane. Let me grab that membrane. Uh, we don't have that in here. Sorry about that. All right, so either came down to installing, you know, I don't know, I could have just pointed to that. So this is the Guru uh, membrane. I could have done this over top of it, but the biggest issue is majority of these, this is Schluter, and they don't really recommend you putting this on the floors either. So um, this was kind of out for that. But most of these don't even fit the whole size room. These are three foot three tall rolls, most of your bathrooms or a minimum of five foot. This one is actually six foot wide. So you would have a seam, you'd have an overlap. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is a big deal with smaller mosaic tiles like this. Any hump or bump or anything like that is gonna make it raise in an area and you're gonna be able to see that. This is very difficult to overcome. Um, you know, you can add additional thin set underneath of it, absolutely, but it's gonna end up, uh, Basically, you know, you're fighting the thin set in between the tiles and getting it out of there. So uh, if you could get your floor 100% flat, then you don't have much to worry about. So membranes were kind of out for me. It didn't make a whole lot of sense to use. Um, so what we're going to be doing is hydroban. So this stuff is really great stuff. I, if, you know, a lot of guys are liking to use that red guard that you get the home stores. Nothing wrong with that. It just takes forever to dry. And I don't really like, I'm pretty impatient with that stuff. And really to get the mill thickness on Red Guard requires multiple coats, unless you're using that speed set stuff, which I don't think is much cheaper than this. So if you plan ahead, order this ahead of time. It's a hundred bucks. You can even go on my Amazon store and order it. Um, but uh, we're gonna be doing two coats of this. 
Typically, it's like an hour or so I can get on to doing my second coat and then I'll be tiling tomorrow. But I think this makes a whole lot of sense. The other thing, you know, is more I was thinking about it. Go to my YouTube channel. You'll see I kind of did a, a price comparison of the different heated flooring systems and why I went with this one. And price really is the biggest factor. But the more I think about it, and again, you've seen me do a lot of Dietrich heat videos. The more I think about it, it makes a lot of sense to waterproof over top of your heated flooring system rather than underneath of it. The Dietrich heat system, uh, all these different mat systems that you place the wire in, uh, all that waterproofing is below it. So why even let the, allow the water to get to the actual wire? So that's where we're gonna be going with this. So, all right, and then, all right. So that gives me a spiel on here on Instagram. You'll hear me repeat myself a little bit because we're obviously doing some real videos on this, but that was basically, you know, not only why I waterproof, but you know, really the, the method that I like to, to go about it. And you'll probably see me doing a lot more of this floor leveling stuff because it really is amazing. You know, put a six foot level down. What's our YouTube look like? Is that in a good spot? Yeah, let me just point these cameras down a little bit. So here's a six foot level. And it really, I mean, it makes it perfectly flat. So, um, and that's just imperative for these smaller mosaics. So if you're planning on doing something like this, your wife's picked it and said, I really want that retro look, do yourself a favor and floor level this so that you don't have any problems. And then with you using the liquid, the liquid membrane, you're not gonna have any humps from the, the, uh, the membrane. That's really the biggest thing. All right. Yeah, let me grab this so I can pay attention to this. So if you guys don't have pro knees, I highly, highly recommend these. I definitely wait, did way too many years of tiling without pro knees. These things are a lifesaver. And what's great about them, I mean, they look like hockey goalie pads, but you're not restricting the back of your knee with these things. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 like I could wear these all day and... Uh, not really have any cramping or anything like that. So these things are really worth the extra expense. And, uh, you know, save yourself. I mean, having knee problems is definitely not any fun. Okay. All right, so let me go. Brush go. Oh, these no, I got one here. Oh, I gotta get my mic on. Um, how do I want to do this intro? Uh, is this going to be a separate video? Yeah, it'll be a separate video for YouTube. So this is waterproofing over yeah. heated flooring. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could probably do a video with me just highlighting the different systems, the comparison thing yeah. after the intro. So this would be an intro to that and then the waterproofing. So kind of combine it so it's not just waterproofing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm doing it. 
All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be installing some waterproofing. And I wanna go and highlight a couple of reasons why I'm going with a liquid waterproofing in this particular situation and how you wanna use other systems and why it just makes a lot of sense to do uh, waterproofing for your bathroom. So let's go through the pros and cons of each and then install the actual waterproofing I'm gonna be doing in this bathroom. Yeah, I was gonna go over the comparison next and why I did it. Um, let's, just, let's just go over exactly what I'm doing here because I don't need to make this like uh, catch-all uh, video. Just I'm just demonstrating what I'm doing here. Okay. Yeah. So. So I have a heated flooring system. I just floor leveled over it and I'm ready to tile. But I want to make sure that I waterproof this and make this, you know, 100% waterproof so I don't have any issues with water leaking out of the tub or around the toilet. And the way I'm gonna go about this is use a liquid waterproofing. And there are a lot of different systems out there that I wanna highlight and express why you wanna use one over the other. But it really comes down to the tile selection that you're planning on installing to really make that decision. So let's get into the reasons of wow and do some waterproofing here. Is that all right? Yeah, go ahead. It no. tripped up a little bit at the end. It was yeah. really good. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna try again, but I like how you did So in this video, we're gonna be waterproofing a bathroom floor, which I think is really one of the biggest and most important parts of renovating a bathroom is waterproofing. So whether it's the tub surround or the bathroom floor itself, it's something that's gonna make sure that you preserve the life of the bathroom. All too many times, these old bathrooms, you tear up things and you see rotten wood, you see mold, and this is a really the way to prevent that. So in this particular situation, we had floor heating down because I really love floor heating and a lot of my clients do, and we're gonna waterproof it. And what I'm gonna be using is a liquid waterproofing. Now there's many different systems to waterproof. We're gonna go into the pros and cons of each and how to go about it, but it really comes down to the tile selection that you're planning installing. So let's get through the points and waterproof this bathroom. All right, that's good. Okay, so, so first thing is, is we had this floor leveled, so everything's 100% flat, and which is really what I really highly recommend because, you know, when you get a six foot level down here and there's no space anywhere and you're nice and level, it works out really great for these small mosaic tiles. If you ever plan to do smaller tiles like this, it's imperative to have a really nice flat floor. So. You can see on this six foot level, there's no space anywhere. Everything's 100% flat. So floor leveler is definitely the way to make a, get you a little bit more precise with your installation. Now, after I removed, I used uh, spray foam all the way around the perimeter to keep that expansion contraction around and around the toilet. And I always recommend having a bag of feather finish on hand to be able to fill in areas, especially like against the tub or around your toilet supply. Another option, you know, you might not know about, because feather finish doesn't need to be primed and you can immediately use this, but it can only go up to a half inch thickness. So if you had a thicker floor, you might want to go with something like this, which is the Ardex AM100. It's a pretty specific brand of stuff, but it's basically a rapid setting mud bed mix and it can go up to an inch and a quarter. So I always have these on hand as a contractor just in case I need to fill something in really quickly so that I can move on with the waterproofing system. So once you have all these things established, ready to go, then you can move on to the actual waterproofing system. Okay, so let me just express to them too, for the video. So when it comes to waterproofing, there's a lot of different systems out there. This is probably one of the most popular. You've probably seen me install hundreds of feet of this here online on how to go about installing DITRA. It's a great product and I really find it to be best for larger tiles. So 12 by 24s, plank tile, 
anything with that larger size because in order to waterproof this, you need to have a band that goes over the seams. Most of these products are only about three foot wide. So you're gonna have a seam somewhere within the bathroom that you're gonna to have to address to make it waterproof. And that seam is problematic for smaller tiles like this. Any little bit of a deviation in hump is gonna allow this to kind of raise up. And these things are not very easy to float thin set under. If you kind of make it a little bit thicker, they're gonna be fighting the thin set that's gonna come out of the joints. So they're really imperative to have a flat floor with the mosaics. So that's why I didn't go with Membrane or Ditra. Great products, just not great in this situation. So, um, yeah, okay. Then the other alternative is to do something like Ditra Heat, which is a matte system similar to this, but allows you to float the wires within it. Problem is they don't accept smaller tiles like this. Plus it's kind of similar to this where this waffle can be problematic to fill and be able to get this to be a nice flat surface. So Dietra heat, that option was out as far as the heating system. So the best alternative next was actually just do a liquid membrane because this way I can roll the entire area. There's no seams and it's gonna be you know, basically kind of like a bathtub. It's gonna be completely waterproof. And we're gonna be using some of this mesh to go up against the corners of the room so that all of these areas around the bathroom are 100% waterproof. Okay, so let me get the... Uh... Where'd my bucket go? Oh, there it is. No, I'm not making any dust. Okay, so really there isn't a whole lot that you need to do this. Oh, there's clipped in. It wasn't clipped in. All right. Well, hopefully it wasn't. Uh, it's always an audio issue with this. Sorry, YouTube. Hopefully that didn't damage the, the audio on there. All right. All right. Why don't you start over with all your supplies that you Okay. Need? All right. Yeah. So winded. And yeah. Get ready. Yeah. All right. So the supplies that you need this, pretty simple. Not much different than painting, really. A, a paintbrush to go around the edges half inch roller, half inch, so that you can make sure that you get a, a copious amount of this on the floor. Um, this is not 100% necessary, but this is a film gauge to double check the thickness that you're actually putting it down. But I actually just, you know, my Dietra or my uh, Curdy trowel is basically the eighth inch. This kind of gives me a reference of it, but really, you just really wanna make a nice, really thick coat of it. We'll demonstrate that shortly. But you wanna mix up the product before you get started. So this is actually something I've been using on many different jobs. I always have a bucket of this on hand, but it's a pretty thick consistency. Uh, so just, it's like a pudding basically. So just mix this up a little bit, make sure that there isn't any surface uh, water on top, I guess you could say. All right, so then this is the mesh. This is what we're gonna be embedding around the corners. And I'm actually gonna do this first because you really should have multiple coats in the corners. Um, so this is just a, a, a thin fabric that basically just gets embedded with the actual liquid membrane. So the other thing you wanna do is get all the dust off the floor, vacuum things up. 
wipe everything down with a damp sponge. You know, actually, let me just get the vacuum because it is bad enough in here that I don't I should have yeah. vacuumed in here earlier. I'm gonna stand up and start for the vacuum. Okay, so let's get some fabric, go along the edge. I guess you can kind of see. Yeah, I don't know how you're gonna unplug that thing. Okay, so let me show you a bit. Audio still, yeah, I still got audio on YouTube, my goodness. <laughs> All right, so really, this isn't really much different than painting, but you just wanna get a nice thick consistency of this on the floor and then embed that deal. So now these walls are gonna be tiled as well, but I really, really like the idea of having this waterproof behind the vanity and behind where the toilet is just i don't know it gives me peace of mind knowing that there's no way that any overflow or accident could get down the, to the floor below so whether you're any type of system you're using i like to do this just to be able to have that insurance i guess you could say I'm not wearing gloves, but I should be because this stuff is kind of nasty to get off your hands, but I don't know what I did with my gloves. So, but yeah, just uh, try to keep this flat and just embed another coat over top of it. Pretty simple, but this is great. I mean, this is a great system for over concrete. You know, the only thing they're not going to really recommend you still do is go directly on top of plywood because it's not going to be uh, suitable for the expansion contraction of that. You still have to kind of isolate it. So whether that's cement board or the floor leveler. So, but going over concrete, this is a great way to do it. And we're just going to go all the way around the perimeter of the room with this. I know that uh, I'm thankful I did this in my own bathroom, my kid's bathroom, because it's amazing how much water is left over after a bath and it's like it just gives you peace of mind knowing that <laughs> it's not going to get below it and rotten out the subfloor it's 
So you're gonna, I mean, when you buy a roll of this fabric, you've got enough for a couple of jobs, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we did cement board on that one. Get over on this side. Okay. All right. Yeah. So on this side. Yeah, but those first uh, jobs I did the really small mosaics on for a floor was an absolute nightmare because I didn't have the floor flat enough. And uh, they went with like a dark grout on white. And uh, you know, that really, that really highlights a lot of stuff. You know, having that light, that dark grout over So we're gonna fold this around. Okay, so we'll get uh, just a little piece there. All right, so when we go up against the tub here, we want to go over here. Right? So I want to show, make sure you get a good shot of this here. You're on? Oh, okay. All right, so this is a very nice area to make sure that you have good waterproofing. So we're going to make sure that we Put some mesh here. There's all too many times I see a lot of rotten wood right at these intersections.
Okay, so what we'll do is just basically put a decent amount right next to this tub. And uh, what we'll end up doing after this stuff dries is just basically caulking the tub to the waterproofing. And that'll be sufficient for this area. So the first coat really needs to have a, or all the coats really need to be pretty thick. And this stuff does uniformly dry pretty well, so don't be afraid to get a decent amount on here. But this is definitely a critical area right along the tub. And like I said, we'll caulk this after this waterproofing with a urethane caulk. And then another great area that I think makes a lot of sense is right around the toilet area. So just caulking or, or just basically applying a thick layer around here because then once I tile everything, I can basically just cut the rest of the pipe. And now everything's 100% waterproof around the toilet. You don't have to worry about anything getting down through this. Okay. And where'd my roller go? In the tub. Okay, so we still got people on here. Yeah, we do. All right. And do we have audio on YouTube? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so the main floor, pretty easy. Just get a fair amount on the floor and we're gonna just roll it with the, the uh, half inch nap roller. And I would say it's not really rolling, it's kind of pushing it <laughs> as far as the thickness goes. So you wanna definitely get enough on here to basically push this around working it into the substrate. And then you can use one of these film gauges you need between 15 and 22. So anywhere within here, you wanna be able to scrape this and be able to see that filled with the um, sealant. So the other way, if you don't have this, is really just to, you know, just try to, just this is an eighth inch by eighth inch trowel and you can see how I have it scraped up and it's kind of filling those voids. So, so a film um, gauge works or you can just use your trowel to gauge it. But really it all comes down to just making sure that you have a really nice thick consistency on the floor. Um, Cause you really need to have 15, at least 15 or 22 mils per coat to be within their requirements. And that's just gonna give you a durable surface. Good thing I have another bucket downstairs. I thought I was gonna. Mm -hmm. So this bucket wasn't full, but one gallon should do this. And I didn't, this was not full, so. I might have to go get that if I don't. Now let me just see what the, where this goes. You are gonna to have to get that other gallon. Where is it? It's in the back of the trailer on the far back corner. Which side? Right Straight right? back on the right. It's in a green lid. So. Yeah. All right, so we're waiting. She's gonna go grab that other bucket. I basically just had one bucket. Uh, try to. Huh. 
You gotta be kidding me. Sorry, TikTok. It's not gonna, I guess I gotta get this phone in a better position. I will. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, uh, I basically got too many cameras going on. I need to get a better function on how all this works. Um, but uh, yeah, TikTok. So we got basically everything uh, water sealed here for the floor. And that's really the most important aspect. So um, I'm going to let you guys go because I don't have a good way to hold this up. But uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, yeah, you, yeah, no doubt. It's definitely a better way to go. Um, yeah. So, all right, guys, take care. All right, so Instagram. All right, so we got our new bucket. So we'll just finish this off. And uh, yeah, really simple. I mean, really nothing bit different than paint and something, but this will turn into like a really olive green and you'll be dry to the touch and then you can do the second coat. Typically an hour, something like that. So, um, but yeah, another gallon. Uh, typically you'd only need one gallon for this, but like I said, the other, I didn't have a full amount of it. So you gotta just mix this up. Let me sure. Okay, then we'll just roll the rest of this out. work. Okay. okay. So there you go. That's just the liquid waterproofing. Again, it's kind of like watching paint dry. Nothing real too complicated about running that. Um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully that demonstrates that. But you can see it makes it a seamless uh, waterproofing system goes over everything and uh, I'm not gonna have any interference when I do that smaller mosaic so it's really awesome um, all right so Jay Bendel when tiling over Dietramek can you use pre-mixed mortar or do you have to have their own thin set definitely want to you definitely don't want to be using anything pre-mixed over anything uh, for tile for the most part you can use pre-mixes for backsplashes or like the Wayne's cotting that I'll be doing here over drywall you could do something like that but most of those mortars um, are not suitable for over uh, a waterproof membrane. They, they might not dry out completely is really the biggest issue. So definitely uh, mix your own thin set. That's definitely the better way to go. Um, yeah, Xavier, exactly right. Don't use acrylic. Um, hey, great, great reference to the TCNA handbook there. Uh, absolutely agree. Pay Carabon is also great. I, I agree with you 100%, Xavier. Um, thanks for doing this help. Yeah, no problem, Dorian. So, um, yeah, 
check out my courses uh, if you guys are interested. If you're doing a bathroom remodel, I definitely think it'll help you out. Uh, if you go to my website, and let me get my screen over here. So if you go to my website at bathroomremodelingteacher.com, uh, you'll be able to find my courses right now. I have about four courses, a tub to shower course, basically encapsulate the entire process. I basically demoed everything down to the, the floor joist and uh, converted an old cast iron tub into a walk-in shower. I just did a regular basic tiled walk-in shower, but it was a little bit more than that because we actually expanded the footprint of it and then everything was custom tiled. So I go through that. Um, and then really the, what it, the, I think the biggest one that most people are getting really benefit out of is, is the tub to shower remodel in seven days or less. I highlight how to do this efficiently and get this thing done. And I go through the entire process of the entire bathroom remodel, including the drywall. I also have that same kind of concept with the tub and shower course. Uh, but you can get all of these courses. I have a custom glass enclosure course too, if you're interested that, that, uh, you know, custom glass costs a lot of money. And if you do it yourself, you're going to save thousands of dollars. But if you do the DIY bathroom geek collection, you'll be able to get all of my courses all in one. And, uh, you know, I really, there's a, each, each course has something for you that you'll be able to pick up and make easier for you. And then if you get this DIY collection, uh, my next course will be incorporated that as well. I'm hoping by the end of October for my next one on that, because, um, you know, basically I haven't decided yet whether it's going to be the curbless shower course or doing a, another, um, you know, basically a tub to, yeah, well, yeah, basically a tub to shower conversion. So I haven't decided which one, but this one will be on there eventually. It's just going to take a little bit of time to get to all of this editing. So, all right, Facebook, YouTube, thanks so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Take care.